all right you are welcome again we are talking about application of differentiation then under application of differentiation we are going to consider the second derivative test theorem okay so this second derivative test theorem is actually solving for uh, local maxima and local minima and then also to determine the nature of a graph either concave up or concave down now let's take the definition we say suppose that a function f of x is differentiable on an interval x1 and x2 containing x0 and that f prime prime of x naught exists then if number one f double prime of x naught is less than zero that means f of x has a local maxima at x naught number two if f double prime of x naught is greater than zero then f of x has a local minima at x naught number three if f double prime of x naught is equal to zero that means second derivative is not employed or is not applicable okay now let's take a look at some few examples to understand better okay so here we're going to find the first derivative the second derivative and then find the f double prime of x naught and then if it is greater than zero or less than zero then we'll see what we can say about it so we say that if it is if the function is a local maxima that means that the graph or the nature of the graph is going to give us concave down so if it is a local minima it is going to give us a concave up that is the nature of the graph is going to be concave up concave down for maxima concave up for minima okay let's take a look at this question examine the curve for minima maxima flex point and direction of bending i'm going to check for the minima maxima flex point and then direction of bending so number one we have f of x is equal to x raised to the power of five minus five x raised to the power of four plus five x cube minus one solution let's go we have f of x we have this right so let's differentiate we're going to have f prime of x is equal to 5x raised to power 4 minus 20x raised to power 3 plus 15x raised to power 2 let's differentiate again we're going to have f double prime of x is equal to 20x cubed minus 60x squared plus 30x okay now we are going to find our x naught from the first derivative okay so we have the first derivative to be 5x raised to power 4 minus 20x raised to power 3 plus 15x raised to power 2 so let's factor out 5x squared so when we factor out 5x squared we're going to have x squared minus 4x plus 3 remaining you get it right so that when you say 5x squared multiplied by x squared it's going to give us 5x raised to power 4 and then 5x squared multiplied by 4x is going to give us minus 20s cubed then when you say 5x squared multiplied by 3 it's going to give us 15x squared okay so the term in this bracket is a quadratic equation so we can solve this by factorization so we will solve this by factorization we're going to obtain two factors so which are x minus one and the x minus three 
we say that we have 5x squared, open brackets, x minus 1, close it, x minus 3 in bracket. So here, let's replace x with x naught, equate it to 0, and solve for x naught. We're going to have f prime of x naught is equal to 5x naught, open bracket, x naught minus 1, close bracket, x naught minus 3 in bracket is equal to zero so here we have five x naught is equal to zero so x naught is equal to zero and then here we have x naught minus one is equal to zero x naught is equal to one here okay and then we also have x naught minus three is equal to zero here we have x naught is equal to three all right yes now for x naught equal to zero we are going to plug in this value into a second derivative into a second derivative so at second derivative we have 20x cubed minus 60x squared plus 30x so here we're going to have f double prime of x naught equal to f double prime of zero okay so in the second derivative let's plug in we're going to have 20 open bracket 0 raised to power 3 minus 60 Open bracket 0 raised to power 2 plus 30 open bracket 0 okay so when we simplify this everything is going to give us 0 that means f double prime of 0 is equal to 0 so based on our definition we say that second derivative test theorem is not applicable here because is not uh, greater than zero and is not less than zero it is just equal to zero so second derivative test theorem is not applicable here now let's go further and check for x not equal to one so let's plug in this one into a second derivative so we're going to say f double prime of x not equal to f double prime of one so equal to we have 20 open bracket 1 close bracket raised to power 3 minus 60 open bracket 1 raised to power 2 plus 30 open bracket 1. So when we simplify this, we're gonna have 20 minus 60 plus 30, which is equal to minus 10. So when we look at this, we say that we have negative. So based on our definition, we say that f of 1 is a local maxima of the function f of x. And then the nature of the graph is concave down at x naught equal to 1. Hello. Now let's go. Now let's check for x naught equal to 3. So let's plug it into a second derivative. Okay. Now that means we're going to have f double prime of x naught equal to f double prime of 3. Equal to 20 open bracket 3 raised to power 3 minus 60 open bracket 3 raised to power 2 plus 30 open bracket 3 so when we simplify this we're going to have 90 okay so we see that this is positive so we can therefore conclude and say that f of 3 is a local minima of the function f of x and then the nature of the graph is concave up at x naught equal to 3 all right, let's go further and solve for the flex point. Let's find the flex point. So what we're going to do here, in our second derivatives, we're going to replace x with xf, okay? And then solve for xf. So that means in our second derivative, we have 20s cubed, minus 60x squared plus 30x equal to zero so let's replace x with xf so we'll replace x with xf you're going to have 20xf cubed minus 60xf squared plus 30xf is equal to zero so here let's uh, factor out 10xf so when we factor out 10xf, we're going to have 2xf squared minus 6xf plus 3 equal to 0. Okay? So here now, if you simplify the term in the bracket, so at the end of everything, we're going to see that 
xf is equal to 0 or xf is equal to 0 0.6 or xf is equal to 2.4 okay so we have obtained value called xf to find the the flex points the xf that we have obtained we are going to place it into our original function or the main function that is being given to us okay now let's go you know our function is x raised to power 5 minus 5x raised to power 4 plus 5x raised to power 3 minus 1 and then our xf the first one we have xf equal to 0 so let's place it in now we're going to have f of 0 is equal to 0 raised to power 5 minus 5 open bracket 0 raised to power 4 plus 5 open bracket 0 raised to power 3 minus 1 so when we simplify this we're going to have f of 0 is equal to minus 1 so the flex point here we're going to have p of 0 comma f of 0 close bracket is equal to p of 0 comma minus 1 so p of 0 comma minus 1 is the first flex point at xf equal to 0 now let's go further for xf equal to 0 0.6 i'm going to place this 0 0.6 into our original function so we're going to have f of 0 0.6 is equal to 0 0.6 in bracket raised to power 5 minus 5 open bracket 0 0.6 raised to power 4 plus 5 open bracket 0 0.6 raised to power 3 minus 1 when we simplify this we're going to see that f of 0 0.6 is equal to minus 0 0.5 so the flex point i'm going to say that p of 0 0.6 comma f of 0 0.6 is equal to p of 0 0.6 comma minus 0 0.5 as the flex point at xf equal to 0 0.6 now let's go further for the last xf point so the last xf point is equal to 2.4 okay so we're going to plug in this value in our original function we're going to have f of 2.4 equal to 2.4 in bracket raised to power 5 minus 5 open bracket 2.4 raised to power 4 plus 5 open bracket 2.4 raised to power 3 minus 1 when we simplify we're going to have minus 18 Point two. So a flex point. We're gonna have p of two point four comma f of two point four is equal to p of two point four comma minus eighteen point two as a flex point. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Let's take more example. Keep watching. Keep practicing. See you next time.